And the date today is April 19th. It's a Friday. Welcome back. This is episode 27 of the Norton Project. Well, the mailman came this morning. He brought me a nice big box full of these friggin' pink peanuts made of styrofoam. Anyway, don't I hate them things. But there's not too many in there, really. I can just put them in a plastic bag and get rid of them on garbage day or whatever. Or see if the wife wants to save them. She might want them for packing materials. Anyway, today in the mail... I got a nice looking MGO gas tank. I would really, really hate to have to put a liner kit in that tank. So what I'm going to do, I will pressure test this tank, put about three, maybe three PSI of air in it, and soap everything up good and look for Look for any air bubbles that might be coming out and pray that it doesn't leak because that will ruin a good paint job. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'd rather not put a liner in it if I can avoid it. But if there if there are any pinholes, well, I'll, I will take care of those. And uh, after that, I'll go to work and put a liner in it if I have to. Anyway, I hope I don't have to. This is not an India gas tank. This is, uh, well, it's Taiwanese. That means MGO made it. So, uh, anyway, hopefully that will work out as good as it looks anyway. So, uh, anyhow, what else came today? Oh, a, a throttle for a good friend of mine who's building the chopper. I also got a couple of gas taps for this uh, for this tank and I do have a an Indian made gas cap coming for that the uh, the new ones you can get from England the price is just it's just prohibitive I'll use the old gas cap off the old tank if I have to rather than spend hundred fifty dollars for a bloody gas cap anyway we'll see what the Indian one is like they look good on uh on the websites and that so i mean if they're half decent i'll certainly use it but uh like i say first thing for me to do to this before i do anything to it at all is to uh is to get some pre a little a little bit of air pressure in there and uh and check for leaks okay i've got the clutch all back together there no surprises when i put that together um yeah just put it in there you know, if you do not have one of those diaphragm spring compressors, I think everybody that owns a Norton has one of these. You need one to work on it. Don't ever try to take the clutch apart by picking out that snap ring because this thing will come flying out of there, probably hit you in the face, cut you open, and cause all kinds of bleeding and unpleasantness. <laughs> anyway, you need one of those to get them in, and especially to get them back in. Anyway, the clutch is all adjusted up. I've got the lever working the way I like it and that sort of thing. I did tighten the sprocket, the forward sprocket here, in on the taper. But, of course, I removed the uh, the rotor again because, as I mentioned before, I'm going to replace that rotor. There are ways you can get them to stop, to stop uh, rattling around, but they never last for very long. So I'm just going to buy a new one and be done with it. Save myself worrying about it. Uh, what else have I done today? I stuck the uh, that white pack headlight lens in the in the uh, in the new rim and that sort of thing. So that's in there all ready to go. Uh, when I was on the phone, I was sort of thinking that if I could get a a wiring harness that I might as well just get one it would save me a lot of fiddling around but they didn't have one in stock and rather than order one from Andover Norton I think I'm just going to make one myself and that way I can make it the way I want it to be so if I decide to go with uh, with negative ground on this bike instead of positive ground that will leave a whole lot of uh, doors open for for different types of LED headlights and that sort of thing without having to uh, 
incur great expense. So anyway, uh, right now, that's where I am. I'm, like I say, I'm waiting for that rotor. Once that comes in, I'll put the stator in and close up that primary. Ah, look what the mailman brought me today. A nice new Wassel rotor. I guess uh, this was sitting at British Cycle at the desk. It was returned by someone who had bought it. And uh, it came back just the day before I I ordered it, apparently. I guess the guy that, that ordered it didn't think he had one. And then when he when this came to him, he realized he already had one. So he sent this back. And I'm not worried about it at all because it was still in the sealed plastic bag. So I know it was never out of the bag. So anyway, it's a real nice fit on that shaft right there where I... Did that little repair where the old one was rattling around, so I'll get the uh, I'll get the uh, key in that shaft and uh, put that new rotor on and be able to finish putting the primary together. So I'm happy about that. Right, there she is, all back together. New rotor in there. The old stator. The old stator's fine. There was a little spot right here on the wire where it was. Apparently chafed through, but it wasn't down to the wire or anything like that, like the actual copper. So I just put a little piece of rubber gas line over there and a couple of small zip ties to hold that in place. So that should prevent any further wear on that wire. I've got some uh, three bond in there on that old uh, on that old rubber grommet to try to do my best to seal that up. I've got the chain here adjusted the three eighths there and three quarters on the back chain uh, what you do with one you do to the other believe it or not I mean this one shouldn't affect that one but I mean when you do change the back especially when you change this front chain if you adjust the front chain you're moving that transmission so when you move the transmission you're going to change the, uh, the tension on that back chain now that back chain will probably need adjusting again within 25 miles of putting this thing on the road because uh, they'll bit into the sprockets, the extra grease that's in them will ooze out and that sort of thing. But uh, that's just par for the course. So right now I'm just getting ready to clean up that outside cover there and put that in place. And then we'll put some oil in this uh, in this primary and that should take care of uh, that should take care of the primary drive getting closer all the time here and there we go get the inside of that all cleaned up put a little bit of three bond right there on that spot there's a little pressure point on a lot of these nortons where where the foot peg comes up against the uh up against the chain case and quite frequently uh cracks it i don't know if this is cracked enough to leak but if it is that three bond will stop it from leaking. So anyway, that's on there. It's all cleaned up. Like I said, ready to go. I'll polished up this side. So yeah, let's uh, let's put it on. There we go. That's the primary. All on and polished up. Got all the old greasy, grimy fingerprints off of it. And I think the next thing to do will be to put the the foot pegs on and. Uh, Run the cable back to that back brake. Uh, things are coming along good here. Right, got the levers and pegs on there. Engine turns over nice, just the way it should. Uh, gearbox is working, goes up and down through the gears well. Oh, what did I have to do? I had to make a, a new stud for right there. That one's a little long. I may cut that off yet, or I might just put a, a nice looking acorn nut on there. Anyway, that's to be determined. I still need to, to get rubbers for the kickstart and for the, for the rider pegs. The rubber that's on that shift uh, lever is in real nice shape, so that doesn't need to be replaced. Um, over here on this side, I replaced these nuts, but I didn't have to replace the studs. They were in uh, they were in nice shape over here. I got the the brake cable all hooked up and that, so. All this stuff is ready to rock and roll. So, what's next? Gee, I guess the next thing to do will be pressure test that gas tank because I really want to make sure that 
that has absolutely no leaks before I get any paint on it. I sure hope I don't have to put a liner in it. I really don't want to do that. All right, I guess it's time to start making a wiring harness. Okay, I'm going to wrap this little video up now. Uh, yeah, everything's all set to go, as I mentioned, and pretty much ready to start doing a wiring harness and do a pressure test on that gas tank. There's a few little things that's happened in my life in the last week or so that I wanted to mention. Uh, I've been president of Atlantic Finnish Motorcycle Society for the past 20 years, and, uh, you know, for... 15 years, it's been great, I've enjoyed doing it, but the last five years it started to, to, uh, I don't know how to describe it, it's just not as fun as it used to be. Anyway, uh, I was proud to do it, I was such a great bunch of guys, you know, whenever things did, the odd time that things did get a little bit rough, I had the full backing of the group, and I appreciate everything that everybody has done to help me in that regard over the last, uh, well, the last 20 years. Anyway, about a year ago, I was trying to get somebody to take over about five years ago, and I couldn't find anybody who was willing to do it. But uh, anyway, about a year ago, we got a new VP in, and he's uh, a pretty good guy. He's really into it, and he was really uh, taking on the job and taking it seriously. And I decided that uh, I would ask him if he would consider running for president this year if I helped to groom him last year on it. He said he'd agree. And anyway, he was a little bit nervous about taking it over this year, but he did take it over. And I said, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be around to help you if you need any advice or help or anything like that. So. Uh, Anyway, I wanted to, a little shout out here to Bobby Wright. Thank you very much for that, Bobby. And we've got a bunch of new, of other new executive officers in the club this year as well. And thank you to those fellas. I won't mention any names because I'll leave somebody out. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Anyway, uh, with that said and done, uh, I'm going to wrap this little video up. Call it quits for this one. Uh, I'll keep you posted. There will be more to come. Like I say, I still have to do a wiring harness and, you know, get the gas tank prepped for, you know, paint and all that sort of stuff. Pressure tested, like I mentioned. And uh, there will be more to come. I will keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Toodly-doo.